Hello friends, this video on force and laws of motion part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this, we ended our second law of motion as well. So now it's, start, it's time to start with Newton's third law of motion. So let us quickly say, uh, quickly see what does the third law of motion state. The third law of motion states that to every action there is always an equal and opposite reaction. This is the most popular law of motion. Most of the times you will see people will say every action has equal and opposite reaction. That means for every force which is acting on an object there is an equal and opposite force which is being exerted on that object. Right? So this law is a very interesting one. Let us suppose this boy Ronnie is holding a ball. So while holding the ball, he is exerting some force on the ball. The ball will also exert an equal and opposite force on Ronnie's hand. So that is what Newton's third law stated. Now the force which is being applied by uh, this boy on the ball, that is known as action. And the force which is being exerted by the ball in return, that is called reaction. Right? So let us suppose if you have this object O, you apply an external force F on it. So this external force F is your action. Now when you apply this force F on it, this object will exert an equal and opposite force on your hand. And this force is known as Reaction. This is called a reaction because it is reply of action. When you give some force, some force is exerted on you. So a reaction is the reply of action. Right? Similarly, this uh, when I talk of this Newton's third law of motion, you, you must think of this example of the apple falling down the tree. This is the most uh, famous experiment, uh, not experiment, this is the most famous story related to Sir Isaac Newton. One so happened that Newton was sitting under a tree and an apple fell on his head. This made him think that what attracted the apple, I mean as soon as the apple was detached from the tree, why did it fall on the ground? Because it was attracted by the earth. So now the question which arose in his mind was that now if the apple is being attracted by the earth, is not the earth attracted by the apple? So with this small observation, he started digging into uh, force and motion and he came up with these three famous laws of motion which governed the entire classical mechanics. Right? So even in this case also, yes, a force is being exerted by the apple as well. But the difference is that since the mass of the earth is very large, therefore the force experienced by the apple is large. Whereas the force experienced by the earth is very less because the mass of the apple is very small as compared to the mass of the earth. That, that's what I told, right? If the mass is higher, the force needed to move that object is also more. So mass of the earth is so huge. So you need a lot of force to make it move. Will that small apple be able to exert that much force? No. Right? So that is why uh, the apple moves because the force experienced by apple is by the earth. So the earth can exert a large force on that small apple and the apple can move. But that small apple cannot exert that much of force that can move the earth. Right? Okay, so as I mentioned uh, before also, we will talk about the action and the reaction forces. Action and reaction forces always act on different bodies. It is a very interesting thing to remember. Action, let us, as I mentioned before also, if this is your object O, action will act on object O, reaction will act on your hand. So if this is your hand. So action will act on the object, reaction will act on your hand. So action and reaction forces always act on different bodies. Action and reaction forces occur at the same instant. I mean, there is no time lag between action and reaction. As soon as some force is applied on an object, immediately a reaction will be applied in the opposite direction. So action and reaction forces occur almost at the same instant. Now, many people think that 
the relationship between action and reaction is same as a cause effect relation that means first action occurs and only after that reaction occurs but it is not like that action and reaction occurs at the same instant so an in important thing to remember is there is no cause effect relation between action and reaction cause effect relation means as i said many people have this misunderstanding that action is the cause which gives rise to reaction so reaction is the effect but it is not like that as soon as there is an action there is a reaction at the same instant so action and reaction occurs at the same instant right and also as i mentioned they act on different bodies for example if action is force exerted by a on b then a reaction would be force exerted on b by a and they are in opposite direction so this is the force exerted on a and this is the force exerted on b as i gave this example of the object and the hand thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again